Derek said, um, "I've got a bit of a, I've got a bit of a, a present for you." And um, I'm sitting opposite him at his desk. He brings over a pair of headphones, puts them on. He said, "Right, listen to this." He presses play on a cassette deck and walks out of the room, free as a bird starts. And I'm by the end of it, I'm in tears. I am literally in tears. And he said, "Yeah, got me like that." Did he come back in like at the end? He left oh, you yeah. on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came back, you know, almost right on cue at the end. <laughs> Found uh, you in a flood of uncontrollable tears, uh, well, I, I, sobbing I, your heart out. I was, yeah, I, I was a little <laughs> moist, one could say, around the eyes. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I mean, he said, it's got us all like that. I, like most other peons, had to sort of wait until it was broadcast on TV. But there you are in the Apple office getting played by Derek. I know. Damn. It, it, it was, yeah, it's totally surreal. Yeah. I was pinching myself every day. But that was nothing compared to what was coming straight down the pike at you. Exactly. Yeah. So a week passes when not a lot happens. Derek rang me at home and said, I think the next day he had an interview for me to do. Could turn out to be a long one, so make sure I've got plenty of my micro cassettes. I basically just come in at whatever time he gave me. You didn't ask him who is it going to be with? No. So you could prep? No, no, no. It's a bit unusual. I think I would have asked. I think I'd have so I can just be ready. This wasn't the first time this had happened with Derek. Okay. Yeah. This had happened a couple of times beforehand. So I didn't know who I was going to interview. He didn't tell me. There was no preparation other than making sure I'd bought a, a whole stack of micro cassettes. I arrived at Apple at a given time, sat down, you know, the other side of his desk, and I said, um, when does this happen? And that's when I asked him who it is. He said, uh, don't worry about that. And he kept getting up and going into the ballroom and coming back. Did you get any idea at this point? Are you beginning to sort of wonder? I thought it might be with one of them. Yeah. The way it was getting sort of bigged up. And there was a yeah. sort of a drama about it. And and also <laughs> other people in the office, you know, were a little bit bristly. Uh. So, you know, it was like one of them might have been there. Anyway, to cut a very long story short, he walks in the final time and he says, OK, we're ready. Have you got everything you need? Yep, I've got my Olympus dictaphone, my uh, stack of micro cassettes, and I'm ready to go with the first tape. And he said, OK, follow me. I walk through, he opens the door, and I look into the room and find a long kind of boardroom table. And I'm sort of ushered to sit down in the chair at the head of the table at the door side. George is to my left, facing Paul and Ringo, who are on the other side. And every fibre in my body came alive with a kind of WTF. At the same time, I'm on the spot and I'm thinking, I've got to really be professional here. I've got to pull out all my chops. Derek is saying, you know, this is Mark. Now, I knew Paul and Paul was like, you know, hello, mate. Uh, what are you doing here? You know, George and Ringo were very friendly hands were shaken and Derek said right what we're going to do is we've got some video on the tv some selected highlights from anthology and he gave me a remote and a, a sort of a, a card with times of what was happening when and said you know go through and review each video clip amongst you and Mark you'll find things to ask you know I said okay I mean nothing could have prepared me for this 